Prince Harry and Meghan Markle live pretty glamorous lives, from staying in million-dollar properties to flying on private jets to wearing the most expensive clothes money can buy. Join us as we take a look at Meghan and Harry's lavish lifestyle. Some of Prince Harry's relatives are among the wealthiest royals in the world. Even though Meghan and Harry decided to step down from their roles as senior royals and become financially independent, their lives are anything but normal. In fact, the couple is still massively wealthy. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Harry is worth an estimated $40 million, most of which comes from the trust he inherited from Princess Diana. Meanwhile, Meghan amassed a $5 million fortune from her days as an actress and influencer. So even though the Queen has cut them off, Meghan and Harry still have cash in the bank. Shortly before the birth of their first son Archie, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle moved from Kensington Palace to Frogmore Cottage in Windsor. But don't let the word cottage fool you, because the property is truly fit for royalty. Located on the grounds of Frogmore House, Frogmore Cottage was built in 1801 at the request of King George III's wife, Queen Charlotte. According to BBC's History Extra, King George III, often referred to as Mad King George, ruled Great Britain and Ireland from 1760 to 1820 and suffered from an illness that prompted episodes of eccentric behaviour. As such, Frogmore Cottage was the perfect escape for the king and his family. By the time Harry and Meghan moved into the royal estate, the home was something of a fixer-upper and underwent a renovation totaling millions before they moved in. When Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced their engagement, royal fans were excited for the next royal wedding. People wondered how the American actress had convinced the once infamous party boy to settle down. Unsurprisingly, Meghan and Harry's wedding became the social event of 2018, and it was seriously swanky. As noted by Town & Country, Meghan's wedding outfit featured a custom Givenchy dress and shoes, as well as Queen Mary's diamond tiara. Following their ceremony at St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle, Harry and Meghan took a carriage ride through the streets in what looked like an actual fairy tale moment. Then, Meghan changed into a slinky white Stella McCartney dress for the evening reception. Unsurprisingly, the couple's wedding reportedly cost around $40 million. In late 2019, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced that they would be spending their first Christmas as a family of three by themselves, instead of joining the Queen at her Sandringham estate as per royal tradition. Instead, the couple spared no expense and reportedly rented a $14 million mansion on Canada's Vancouver Island. According to the Daily Mail, the property boasts eight bedrooms and access to two beaches. The main house features a two-story living room, fireplace, wine-tasting room, chef's kitchen complete with a pizza oven and a game room. According to the Daily Mail, Harry and Meghan originally planned to have Christmas dinner at a restaurant while visiting Canada, and their security team allegedly scouted out a local high-end venue. However, they ultimately decided not to go through with it and spent the holiday at a VIP resort, somehow upgrading their already lavish Canadian experience. The Daily Mail also reported that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex hired special caterers for the occasion and ordered a spread that included vegetarian options. And after their Christmas lunch, Harry and Meghan were spotted taking Archie for a walk. While Meghan and Harry's holiday was much more laid back than the royal celebration hosted by the Queen, it was still extremely luxe. Sometimes official duties take members of the royal family overseas. And even though they've since stepped down from their senior roles, Meghan and Harry continue to live a jet-setting lifestyle. Harry and Meghan's third date was a week-long camping trip in Botswana, which was quite an extravagant adventure for a couple who had only been on two dates. Only two dates, and then <laughs> and then going basically effectively on a holiday together nowhere. in the middle of nowhere mm. and you know showing a, showing a tent together. It's undeniable that jetting off to a foreign country on a third date is just that's not something normal people do. According to Town & Country, Prince Harry revealed, We camped out with each other under the stars. Unfortunately, fans hoping for details about Meghan and Harry's honeymoon destination are going to be disappointed. Vogue reported that the location of the couple's honeymoon was kept tightly under wraps, and we still don't know where they actually went. But if the couple's third date is any indication, it was probably a very romantic trip. Being a member of the royal family comes with some serious perks. For Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, that includes being invited to special events of which we could only dream. In 2018, Meghan was invited to the British Fashion Awards, where she presented the Designer of the Year Award in women's wear to the creative director of Givenchy. For the evening, Markle wore a custom one-shoulder Givenchy gown that was every bit as luxurious as the occasion. And outside of the fashion world, Meghan and Harry attend events others couldn't even pay for if they wanted. 
And in 2019, the couple attended the premiere of The Lion King in London, where they walked the yellow carpet and met Beyonce and Jay-Z, which must have been nothing short of magical. It, it, it means a hell of a lot to us. When Prince Harry married Meghan Markle, Queen Elizabeth II officially gave the couple the titles the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. However, when Meghan and Harry announced their decision to step back as senior members of the royal family, there was discussion as to whether the Sussexes would keep their royal titles. After the royal family ironed out the details of the couple's exit, Harry and Meghan's website revealed the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will retain their HRH prefix, thereby formally remaining known as His Royal Highness the Duke of Sussex and Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex will no longer actively use their HRH titles as they will no longer be working members of the family as of spring 2020. The couple was also required to stop using their Sussex royal brand and they are no longer allowed to use the word royal Royal in any future work they carry out. When Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were performing duties as senior members of the royal family, their work was pretty much non-stop. Between official engagements, charity events, royal tours and special events, it's hard to imagine how they balanced work with raising a newborn. Luckily, they reportedly had help, which is a luxury many families around the world don't have. In January 2020, People reported that Meghan and Harry left their son Archie in the care of Meghan's friend Jessica Mulroney when travelling to London. Meanwhile, Entertainment Tonight revealed that they also enlisted the help of a London agency to help them find a nanny. According to Express, members of the royal family typically use nannies who graduate from one particular college. Although the couple didn't go with royal tradition on this occasion, their selection in hiring help for Archie proves they spared no expense. Before Meghan Markle met Prince Harry, she worked as an actress in Hollywood, where she got to meet many fellow celebrities. According to The Evening Standard, Meghan's inner circle includes big stars like Serena Williams, Abigail Spencer and Priyanka Chopra. Naturally, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's wedding was a star-studded affair, and the guest list included Idris Elba, Oprah, Amal and George Clooney, James Corden, Tom Hardy, Elton John and David and Victoria Beckham. Basically, Meghan and Harry have lots of famous friends who were more than happy to step out for a royal wedding. Meghan and Harry reportedly relocated to Los Angeles in March 2020, which will presumably allow them to see their celebrity friends more often. Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, also lives in the area, meaning that baby Archie will have a lot more quality time with his grandmother. Leaving England was a major decision, but living in California means that the Sussexes have famous friends and family members nearby, which has got to be a good thing. Meghan Markle was a so-called commoner when she married Prince Harry, but her groom had spent his entire life living with all of the luxuries associated with being a member of the British royal family. While adults in the family seem to live very comfortably indeed, the royal children also live insanely lavish lives. Harry's childhood was spent in palaces or vacation homes, flying on private jets and attending expensive boarding schools, and it seems as though no expense was spared in his upbringing. Like his brother before him, Prince Harry attended Eton College. The exclusive boarding school counts several other notable attendees among its list of graduates, including Eddie Redmayne, Tom Hiddleston and even Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Business Insider reported that the annual tuition for students at Eton is $52,000 and admission is based on a lengthy three-year application process. However, as a member of the royal family, Harry probably got accepted right away. To understand just how lavish Meghan Markle's life is, it's worth looking at her wardrobe. Meghan's most notable outfits alone would bring the total cost of her apparel to nearly $1 million. According to Entertainment Tonight, Meghan's custom Givenchy wedding dress alone cost almost half a million dollars. Add another $150,000 for the Stella McCartney dress she wore to the evening reception, and it's not hard to see how the cost of her closet has added up to quite so much. The cost of Meghan's wardrobe is enough to make anyone's jaw drop, but the Duchess his smart style has helped earn her even more recognition. For instance, she won People's Best Dress Star in 2018, and she collaborated with charity Smartworks in 2019 to create a collection of workwear for women. In a statement launching the collection, Meghan said, I am excited to celebrate the launch of another initiative of women supporting women and communities working together for the greater good. When you buy any item in the Smart Set Capsule collection, the same item will be given to a Smartworks client, and with it, the confidence and support she needs to enter the workforce and take an important step in building a career. 
Of Meghan's style, actress Abigail Spencer told Vanity Fair, She's got warm elegance. Though her style is hard to pin down, it's classy and timeless. It's still that California girl relax. I like to look polished and put together. And it seems that looking so elegant comes at a cost. Arguably, flying in a private jet is the pinnacle of luxury. While Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's use of private jets has often come under intense scrutiny, flying in a private aircraft is just further evidence of the couple's enviable lifestyle. According to Town & Country, in August 2019, the royal couple flew in Elton John's private plane to the singer's home in France for a family vacation. Of the couple's trip, Elton John wrote on Twitter, to support Prince Harry's commitment to the environment, we ensured their flight was carbon neutral by making the appropriate contribution to carbon footprint. According to Town & Country, the tradition of giving birth in the Lindo Wing of St Mary's Hospital in London began with Princess Anne and was continued by both Princess Diana and Kate Middleton. However, in keeping with the status as royal rule breakers, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle opted not to welcome their baby with a photo opportunity on the steps of the Lindo Wing straight after their child's birth. Instead, details of the couple's birth plans were kept under wraps and Meghan's chosen hospital was widely speculated right up until baby Archie arrived. After multiple rumours, Meghan gave birth at London's Portland Hospital, which was later confirmed by Baby Archie's birth certificate. The Daily Mail reported that the upscale hospital's childbirth packages can cost nearly $25,000. The hospital rooms reportedly include four-poster cribs and luxury toiletries. And when it comes to hospital food, new parents are reportedly offered 24-hour room service as well as a lavish spread of offerings including champagne and lobster upon the arrival of their newborn. Considering the fact that Meghan and Harry have such a luxurious lifestyle as literal royalty, it's hardly surprising that they chose such a fancy hospital for the birth of their first child. If only every maternity ward offered a champagne service. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about your favourite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.